we have the insert. Now we have to go and create the select all. So this would be like select star from a table. Okay. So you can replace, you go ahead and, and leave this here. You can go ahead and replace the, oh, actually, you know what? <clears throat> go ahead and save this file and you can call it birthday inserts. So we just did the insert start procedure. Now we need to go and do the select start procedure. And this one, you can have several of them, right? So you can have select all, which would be just a select star from the data from the table, or you can select by ID. So you can do select star from the table where the ID is equal to something, or you can select by some field, you know, some filter of some sort, right? We're gonna do, we're gonna do the select all and select by ID. And we'll stick with those two for now. Okay. So we need we need another start procedure where you can just select everything. So let's start up a new query. And then you could paste in that other template. Yeah. And so creator alter proc birth date select all. So under select all, you don't have any parameters. You're just going to select everything. So you can get rid of all your parameters. And you're going to have your select. Instead of your insert statement, you're going to have your select statement. Select, right? Yeah, and um, you can normally inside of star procedures, you're gonna want to avoid using the star. So star procedures, you actually want to select the fields that you want to that you want to show in the result. So if we're looking at your birth dates, mm -hmm. you're gonna select each one of those columns. Okay. Do we have to put the at sign in front or? No, this would just be the name of the fields. So this one here, I mean, it's the same, right? Create or alter a store procedure. Mm -hmm. The name of it is birthdays. We prefix it with the table name. And this is just a name and we can call it whatever, but the naming convention is table and action. And there's no parameters and you're selecting. Now, the reason you have to select the fields, you don't have to, but the reason it's recommended is because if you're programming against these store procedures, and your table changes, the table structure, like say, for example, you add a new field, by adding that new field could potentially break your program. And so you don't want that. You wanna be able to control by specifying, hey, these are the tables that are running this store procedure. I mean, these are the fields, sorry, these are the columns that are running this store procedure and this is what's gonna be returned. And you can go and add new columns, but your store procedure can still stay the same because you don't have to select all the columns. You only select a subset and that store procedure will always work. Now, when the program is ready for those changes, you can change the program and change the store procedure. You'd line them up together 
and now you know you, your program continues to work with the new changes of the store procedure does that make sense mm -hmm. so that's why you want to specify the field in store procedure so that it doesn't affect changes that are going on in your in your table all right all right so let's do a select by id okay so here you can just um you can just take this right here and instead of select all do select by id and then just add your where clause on the top no your where clause at the select statement oh so your select you're going to select everything just add a new line control z that oh you have your window open right for your yeah it's over here yeah yeah so you look at your at your select statement with the where okay you want to add the filter for the id Where ID equal is equal to something, right? Mm -hmm. So now we need to add a parameter. And what is what is the type of the ID? The type? Yeah, so we have to add a parameter between the create and the as. Okay. Remember how we did it on, on the other store procedure? Um, we did an at. Oh, okay. At ID. All right. So let's do a select by ID. Okay. So here you can just um, you can just take this right here. And instead of select all, do select by ID. And then just add your where clause. On the top. No, your where clause at the select statement. Oh. So your select, you're going to select everything, just add a new line. Control Z that. Oh. You have your window open, right? For your yeah, it's over here. Yeah, yeah. So you look at your at your select statement with the where. Okay. You want to add the filter for the ID. Where where ID. is equal to something right mm -hmm. so now we need to add a parameter and what is what is the type of the id the type yeah so we have to add a parameter between the create and the as okay remember how we did on on the other store procedure um we did an at Oh, okay. At ID. And then we have to specify the type, right? Which is an int. Oh, inside parentheses. No, no, no parentheses, just a space. Int. Yeah. And then that's it. And then the where clause is where ID is equal to at ID. So we want to specify the ID is equal to the variable or the parameter, I should say. Whoops. I pushed too many buttons. <laughs> okay. And let's get rid of that space, that line, that empty line between from and where and, and line up your swim lines. So the start procedure, you know, we're going to create it or we're going to alter it. And we're calling it birth dates select by ID. And we're receiving one parameter. It's an ID parameter. And so all parameters, all variables in SQL Server, they start with an at sign. That specifies that that is, it's kind of clunky, but that specifies that it's a variable or a parameter. That parameter type is an ID 
I'm, I'm sorry, that parameter type ID is an integer, okay? And integer is a keyword, which means it has to be all caps. There you go. And then the body of the start procedure is select all those fields from the table birth dates where the column ID is equal to the parameter ID. And then you need an empty line after. There you go. So let's go ahead and execute this. And let's create our test. So you got your select all and you got your select by ID. So that's part of your read in the CRUD, right? Mm -hmm. And now let's go back to the start procedure. Mm -hmm. Over here. Uh, no, the tab with the start procedure, yeah. So now we need an update. Now, so an update is going to be exactly the same, except that the name of the start procedure needs to be update instead of insert. And then you also need to add the ID parameter. Does that make sense? So let's start with line one, instead of birth dates insert, it's birth dates update. And before we forget, let's do a save as, and then save it as birthday update, birth dates update. So let's, and then, so start a new line in between line one and two. Go ahead and line it up with your parameters. And here it's going to be at ID and it's an int. So we're adding a new parameter, right? And so we're gonna update birthdays and then set goes onto a new line. So we're gonna start our swim line. And then, and then update as well. And so, cre um, so here, what we're going to want to do is we're going to actually go ahead and um, create it at, update it at is on a new line, and line that up under create. Oh. And then the where clause is a new line and line that up with your swim line. All right, create it at, you can replace, oh, you did a control F, yeah. Instead of create it at, because create it at, we only wanna, we only, the only time that we wanna modify created at is when you insert the record. So you don't wanna, modify it anymore because you only want to reflect that to be when you created the record. So what you're going to do is you're going to start with full name. And so instead of created at, just put full name. And no. then inst instead of no, no at sign. Yeah, no at sign. And then instead of create our get date is going to be at full name. What happened? You pressed enter. And then on the, on the update. Mm -hmm. Where I be? Oh, oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because we're looking at the field ID. Where it's equal to the parameter at ID. You could do a, a birthday updates and you need to send in ID number eight. Okay. So ID number eight is an int, right? The, 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 the quote, the single quote indicates that it's a string mm. and it's actually an int. There you go. And um, yeah, the unfortunate part is that on these updates, 
you need to send in all the values, whether you're going to change them or not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so even if you're not going to change Adam Osborne, you still need to send in Adam Osborne, his date of birth, his date of death. And let's just say that Osborne Computers will name rename that to Osborne Computers, comma, Inc. Inc. Yeah. Even if you're going to change one, one field, you have to pass in all of them with the store procedure. That's kind of the downfall. And you would think is like, well, that's kind of inefficient because now I got to update all the fields with the same values, right? Mm -hmm. But the way that the way that SQL Server works is if you update one field or if you update all the fields internally, it's deleting the record and inserting a new one. So it doesn't matter if you're doing one or all, you're still doing the same thing. It's actually deleting the record and inserts the new one with the, with the values that you're passing in. Even if you're just updating one field, that's just the way internally, that's how it works. So you're not losing anything by just sending in all, all the fields. And then I would copy line one and put it after line two just so that we can see the before and after. And you can just execute this whole thing. So that's, you see how you get the before picture and after picture? Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. cool, huh? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's our update. What's left? Delete. Delete. I'm going to let you go through the delete because you have the statement, you have the start procedures. Yep. Let's see. Let's see your work in action. All right. So let me save this one first. Which one is your delete statement? Right here. Okay. So how does that compare to the other one that you got? Go ahead and minimize this window down to the size of the code. Oh. The size of the code. All right. So you see your delete statement at the bottom, that little window? Mm -hmm. And how does that compare to your delete statement inside your store procedure? What, what do you have that doesn't belong in there? Delete um, for you. People and then person ID. Um, missing something here. So in your delete, in the body of the statement, birth dates. you have delete birth dates, which basically means delete from a table, right? Mm -hmm. And if you look at the, at the one from the address, it says delete from people, which is the name of the table, where the person ID equals four. So what is it that you have in your start procedure that doesn't belong in there? Oh, updated is to get out of here. And what else? And that's it, right? Or no ID or ID. No, so ID the, to... the set is used for the update only. Oh, oh, so we just need to get rid of the whole thing. Exactly, there you go. Um, and, and so, Look at the start procedure again. And how many parameters do you need? Uh, just one. Okay. And what parameter is it that you need? Just the ID. So would it make sense to delete the rest of them? Um, Which ones are your parameters? Highlight your parameters for me. My parameters? Yeah. Oh, all these, huh? So I shouldn't delete all of them. Just the no, set. No, 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 no. You don't oh. need that set. That set is for the updates only. Okay. So you don't need a set in a. Oh, I need to. I need to add all of them on here, huh? No, no, no. Hmm. All you need. So your your delete your delete statement is complete. You're done with that. So the body of those, the body of the start procedure is perfect, just the way it is. What's wrong with your parameters? Your parameters are the ones that. Oh, okay. So I don't need all of these then. 
Exactly. Just the ID. Yeah. All right. So you see, whatever you're going to use in your parameters, you use them mm -hmm. in the body of the parameter of the of the start procedure. Whatever you don't use, you get rid of it because at that point you're causing confusion and you're including more than what you should you should really include at that point. Does that make sense? Got it. Yeah. So, okay, so let's do a file save as. Let's go ahead and do a file save as on this. And this is your delete, right? There it is. So you got your crud, all right? You have your insert which is your create, mm -hmm. you have your selects, you have your select all and select by ID, which is your read, then you have your update and you have your delete. So that makes up your whole crud at that point. There you go.